G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now I thought it was time that I finally did an update on the Constructo Bounty because I have completed all the planking here on the port side. So in other videos I was showing how to do the um, top section here and the bottom section and how to get the first layer on and now this is the second layer. The second layer is complete. All the um, tapering has been figured out. It's gone in very nicely. Very happy with that. And I've started on some of the finer details like plugging the nail holes and those sort of things. And I've also worked on the deck and I'm working with some effects there trying to make the uh, effort by the previous builder look just a little, little more realistic, a little more interesting. So that's what's going to be in this video. It's going to be the final layer of planking but Shortened down. I won't go into a lot of detail. I'll just show you how I use the electric plank bender and a few hints and tips. But then I'll show you this um, plugging of nail holes because you don't really want black nail holes on the side of your hole. They didn't have that. The nail holes were drilled out bigger and then they put wooden plugs in. And really the effect you should get is of similar colour wood plugs. Now I show a traditional way of doing it and then I show a much faster and much easier way that I worked out and you can choose which one you think is better. All right, does that sound interesting? Yes, it could be. Okay, roll the music. I've put in the rudder post and the false keel that's gone on. I even fitted the stem and it was a bit tricky. The curves they had didn't match mine mainly because obviously my hull shape is not going to be the same as the one that this kit had because I pulled off all those rotten planks from the previous guy and then I had to reshape and refair and all the rest of it, all the um, all the bulkheads. And so by the time I put my two laser planks on, my curves were slightly different. So I had to do a lot of chopping and changing and fitting and it was quite a tricky job to get this to fit. But it's on, it's not too bad. Now I still have things to do. There are going to be planks added here at the bow because the bow should raise up and this kit is inaccurate at that point because I'd noticed in previous videos how my deck had a um, basically had a camber on it so that um, the rain can wash off or the, you know the salt and the sea and all the rest of it can wash off and that meant that it was completely level here with the front planks which which you know basically it shouldn't be they should be planks up on my research I found I really should go higher so that'll be in another video I'll show how we add a little just a little piece here which raises this up about another two or three planks. And at the stern, I want to put in the, um, the bulwarks, right, either side, which just sit up there, and then a couple of cannon ports that go through. So um, they, they basically go here into where the, uh, the ladder is on the side of the ship to get in. So there's that to come to get this hull to the finishing point that I want before I'll start on any other projects. So I really want this sort of looking like a ship, and then I'll put it aside, and I've got a few other things I want to work on. But what I want to show you now is this effect of plugging the nail holes and as I said you if you've got black nail holes on your hull then you've got a problem the salt from the sea is going to rust them and then you're going to have big streaks and all the rest of it and generally speaking especially ships like this one the Royal Navy wouldn't stand for this every nail that goes in then has a countersunk hole that is wider probably at three times the size of nail head so if you imagine you have a, a one inch nail head okay it's quite common for, for ships and then they would have a three inch little wooden plug that goes in and that is then corked in and that seals it in now where these plugs are sitting on my particular model is where the plank joins are and although some are real plank joins here where I actually had to join a couple of pieces of the uh, the wood because I was you know unable to find a plank long enough because I was running out of the damn things or I just simply had damage or repairs and I needed to put a plank joint in but the rest of them are just simply I've measured I've basically assumed every plank is 10 centimeters long which works out nicely for the hull because it's 50 centimeters long in total that's five long planks and obviously you get more planks you'll get basically up to uh, five or six or seven if you're running short planks where they basically at the ends you only going to have half a plank now because I didn't have enough real plank joints I needed to fake the other ones and all I did with that is I used a um, scorer in my case my trusty corn on the cob and I scored the little plank ends and then I put a little graphite in there and smudged it in to act as a little bit of corking. And that gave me a good reference point to put my nail holes. Now, 
I know, strictly speaking, all my null plugs should go all the way down, that all of these represent a frame. That's the thing, you, you try and line them all up, because obviously nailing points are on frames, the frames underneath, okay? Or bulkheads, if you like. But I'll call it framing. Now, these frames, I could do that, but that's a hell of a lot I'd have to do all over the place. To just get the effect that I wanted, I have used a bit of artistic license, and I have simply put the nails with their plugs on my plank joints. And that gives enough of an effect to break this up and make it look interesting. Now, toothpicks and um, glue and waiting for them to dry and then cutting them off and then trying to file everything flat. In fact, some of these are still not perfectly flat. They still bump out and they're quite annoying. That is doable, but it takes forever. It really does. So I thought there's got to be a better way. I really, all I want is an effect with the wood. So if we have a look here on the, um, the port side that I'm just working on, because it's one I've just finished making. I still have the same sort of effect. Okay. But no toothpicks were hurt in the making of those. So these plugs look very similar to those other ones. In fact, they're a bit more subtle. I haven't done them all, I've only started doing a few, but you can see how the effect already is taking shape. And I rather like those. And they got done in much less time, much less time. So I'm going to show you now my method, as opposed to the drilling holes, putting toothpicks, gluing toothpicks in, waiting for a bloody day and everything for the PVA white wood glue to set, cutting them off, sanding them flat, uh, you know, all of that rig roll, which really, took me about 10 hours to do that whole site, to do all those nut holes and plug them all up. This site is probably going to take me one or two hours. Really. So let me show you that method. The things you'll need for my method, well, you won't need those. You won't need those at all. No, I went through about 300 toothpicks. Well, actually, because I cut them all in half, 150. 150 toothpicks to plug 300 nut holes, yeah. There's, there's four every on every joint, and um, you've got 24 plank. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot, believe me. Now, one tool that you'll need, which you might not have, is a pokey thing, okay? It'll need to be round, because really you want it to fit in to the null hole, and it is essential. You'll need something. I've used corn cob holder that I have the bottom ripped off, which I keep fairly sharp, and I use it as a scribe. And even though I've bought a really good quality scribe now, this tool still gets used all the time because I just find it easy to hold and use. So if you've got an old corn on the cob holder and it's broken, we'll just rip off one of the prongs and the other one, you can do a myriad of things and scale modeling with it. Okay, so we need that. We'll need some white wood glue. A little bit of that. You'll need your modeling knife. So we need that. So you'll need also a rule. In this case, I've got a T-square, which is rather handy because with this, I can measure off my plank set. There we go, 10 centimetres, there it is, go. And I can basically mark the line. And I'll also need that because each of my plank joints here, I'm going to need to score that with a knife. Okay, so I will need to score down, then score up. The reason I'm doing that, I didn't go like that, because you will slip and you will cut into the plank below. So down from where you know the edge is there and up from there and that gives me a fake plank join now my fake plank join needs to be corked and here's my corking it is um, just some graphite from pencil which I can then rub in so I now have a plank join okay now you also need an eraser because you may have gone crazy and put too much on of the graphite so that will take that off and just leave the tiny bit that's in the hole. So that's good. We need that. You're going to need some sandpaper. Well, we don't need that right now. We'll need that shortly. All right. Let me show you the method. Now, you may notice I've got a tea towel here. Now, I found when I was working on the hole, especially as I'm you know, basically needing to roll it over and twist it around, it's best to have something soft 
so it's not on your um your cutting board because that can scratch it and also sometimes your tools will slip over and they might end up underneath with this in the way it kind of stops the tools getting there and it gives me a nice soft surface so um you won't have to then sand out all the scratches that you've made as i had to Now to make these holes, I will need some form of drill. In this case, it's a pin vise, which is rather handy. And I've got, I think it's a 0.5 millimeter drill bit in there. So that's all I needed for this job. Now, if you're doing the job properly, you would use a scriber or something like that to mark where your holes need to go. And we'll do it properly. I was actually just going straight in with the, uh, with the drill. Put the bit on it and away I went. But we'll do it properly. So, okay, we've marked those. Well, you probably can't even see them. But now at least it's going to now don't lose this stuff, you are going to need that. Keep all your shavings. In fact, I was doing them one at a time when I did it before, but that'll be fine. We'll, we'll have plenty. You can always make more. You can always sand up a, a plank to give you what you need. So, okay. We've done that. Now, this is where our little corner of the cob holder comes in handy. Poke that in there. All we're doing is pushing that bearing down because that bearing down is handy and we need a fairly perfect hole to simulate our plug. Okay, now we need something with the wood colour back in there. What have we got that's the wood colour? What can we possibly have that is the wood colour? Well, we can use a little bit of PVA white wood glue. And I've just gone straight onto the model no problem at all, and I'm going to do something horrible, I'm going to use my finger. You could use a cotton bud, I don't care, I just do this with my finger. Okay, and I want to fill those holes. I want them to look full. So I've got the top two. I ran out of glue on the bottom two. Don't worry that this is on top of your model, it will all make sense in a sec. So... Okay. So now my holes have disappeared. You can't actually see them. And what I can do is I can take on another finger, don't use the same one, I'll take my wood shavings in a circular motion. I found I can rub them in. Okay. Now to make it even work better, with a bit of this sanding paper, just gently, I'm going to push down any of the burring that happened with the um, drilling. But not only that, I've just put tiny shavings in over the top of my glue. That's done. Now if you had done this with toothpicks, okay, you would have had to drill holes, sure. Then you would have to glue each toothpick and try and poke it in and do that. And that's a whole production number in itself, which is going to take quite a few minutes. Then you have to wait for all that to dry. So you can't do this process in, in one day. You know, you're going to have to do it over a couple of days. Then you would have to cut them off. And then you've got the lumps and the stumps. And you've got to try and file those down and then sand them and not be too sort of <laughs> verbose or too energetic with your sanding. Because remember, these top layer planks, especially on my ship, which is a second layer of planking, these are only 0.5 millimetre thick. So they're, they're only the thickness of this drill bit. They're very, very small. So if you do that, I had actually sanded right through a couple of my planks a few times, and I actually had to pull planks out, restrip, and lay in new planks because I had actually sanded right through to my first layer. So I thought, there's got to be a better way. Anyhow, for me, that is easy. And it's done. That's it. It's sanded. That is now sanded, ready to go. And if you want to see how that's going to look when it's finished, you really should wait till it dries, but if you know if you want to see how that looks when it's finished, a bit of water. All right, that is the effect that we are going to get, which is exactly what we want. 
it's slightly darker because basically you've got end on grains. That's the whole trick with toothpick. You've got end on grains which end up being slightly darker and therefore it gives you that effect. And they're not nails, they're nail plugs. So there you go, that's how I do that. And they're very easy to do. And I can accomplish, you know, I could possibly do this whole half in just a, a quiet afternoon. Easy as that. You need to take breaks, it does drive you insane, it's a very repetitive task. But that is my simple and easy method for creating the nail hole plugs on the side of the hole. Now as promised, here is the uh, final planking, the second layer. Now uh, these are the safely planks that go on the top there. And they bend fairly easily as you can see in the X direction at least, along, you know, along the length of the hole. They're already that thin that they, they bend nicely, so that's not a real issue. But what I do is I still soak them in the water for a while because the planks at this kit need to twist up and then kind of um, rotate around as they go along. Now one of the most important things you can do when you're planking is make sure the area is clean and free of any gunk. So any of the glue that might have been on there previously I've scraped out and then I've used a toothbrush here to completely clean it out. That'll ensure a really really smart fit, a really you know firm fit of my next plank. Alright the wet plank doesn't take long, you don't need to leave it in there for very long, just a few minutes. The water has just made it a bit more malleable. Because remember, this thing is actually going to have to twist in a couple of different directions at the same time. Now I need to pin the uh, end here to the stem. So um, that's going to require a bit of hammering there, Harry. I think you'll need your hammer. Yes. Hammer that in so we can get um, a nice, firm locking position for that plank. And it bends easily. As you can see, there's really not much to it. I'm just going to have to put some pins in here lightly to hold it in place. And luckily I've got that balsa wood on the front there. That was the whole reason for that method of putting balsa there. It does make this operation fairly simple. I've got a frame there, so I've got to nail that one in. Now, there's a whole run here that's quite smooth, so nice and straight. I really don't have to worry too much about putting pins there. But once we get about the middle of the hull here, this is where it starts to twist up, which is a bit of a problem. So unlike the other planks down below, which I've I've cut to fit perfectly to the contours of the ship and they pretty well don't require much twisting. They, they sit nicely and they're all tapered exactly to fit. Here, this thing's got to twist up as it goes along. These planks, of course, are not tapered, so you've got the full 6mm width there. So another hole and I'll work my way all the way along here, just drilling into the first layer. So I'm not damaging the second layer at all, that's just outside of there they are, they're all in, everything's been positioned roughly. Now I'll get my electric plank bender out, which is nothing more than a glorified soldering iron. I've wet those planks and now I rub the iron over it to try and get that thing to twist down flat because it's starting to curve out a bit at the bottom. So I'll just get those roughly positioned, leave them there for now. Now I can work to the bow and I start removing pins so that I can get the glue in. Here we go. To sell his aqua here, I love that stuff, works perfectly. But any white PVA wood glue will work. Be liberal with it, don't be squeamish, you can use plenty of it, it's cheap. I only do a section of time. So this straight section, which doesn't require much curving, it, it should just go down pretty well with a, you know, my fingers pushing it into position there. Remove all your excess glue, you don't want that in the way because it tends to gunk up on the uh, electric plank bender. Pin it back in again, a bit of a clean, a bit of dab of water just to keep that moist because now the electric plank bender's out. Just a straight rub across there, it's nice and easy. And you'll see the glue bleeding out from underneath. Now, one thing I do here is I give this a rub. I find once I've bent the planks and I've used the bender on them, I'll rub with my hand. It really does help. I don't know if it's the friction or it's the pressure, but once you've done that, they're pretty well locked in. So that is a good little trick. The bow here is pretty good. It doesn't require much twisting. The um, the section here is it's fairly straight up and down, so it's, it's not going to be that hard to really get this um, this plank in. So just a matter of again, a bit of glue, or a lot of glue, <laughs> pin it where it needs to be pinned so that it'll it'll hold in there. It is a bit harder gluing to the um, to the balsa, I must say. It's a lot easier when you you're gluing to the first layer of planks. So it's one disadvantage with the balsa, but it still works. So with that in place, what I do now is I start removing intermediate pins so I can use the soldering iron. So that pin there, I'll move out the way, and use the soldering iron there on the plank bender and get that smoothed and pushed into place. Okay, 
Now we repin that and I take out the next pin. And I'll just work my way all along the bow. I'll show you how I do it here at the stern. It was a lot clearer. I think that footage wasn't real good. So loosening those pins, I can get this plank in. I don't take them out completely. Now this bend here is in three different directions. So uh, it does take a bit of mucking around. So once we've got those uh, planks in, I take out the intermediate pin again and get that electric plank bender in. Because not only is it got a bend on the curve of the hull in the X and the Y direction, it's also got to go up in the Z. It's got to bend up because the stern lifts on this and you're supposed to run the planks along the deck. So using this method, I keep working my way along, taking out the pins. Once it's fully pushed in, and again, bit of a rub, bit of a push, then, um, then I won't need that pin again. Not for a while I'm doing this. I keep tension on the end of the plank, pulling it out towards the stern to make sure it doesn't bunch up or um, you know, basically push things out of shape. So that's a little trick. Again, rubbing with your hand really does quite a lot of work. So a good rub, gets it all into position, and then I'll just put the pins back in to make sure nothing springs out while I go and have a cup of coffee. So it's as easy as that, really. And that's basically the method of planking that section with the safety planks. So I hope that's explained it to the people that have been asking, because really, it's not that hard at all. Moving on now to the uh, lower part of the hull. I've already done just about all of it. I've only got two planks left to do until I can meet back up again at that uh, where the whale line would be. Now again, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. It's so important to get in there, and I use a couple of different shaped files to get in and clean that gap. Now I need to measure again. As you're planking and you're getting closer to mating up, you need to keep measuring, check you're on track, and I often find planks have drifted a little bit and there's a little adjustment to be made. Now I want these last two planks to be perfect, so they're going to be custom made to fit this slot. Two planks, exactly the same tapering, they will fit in. Now we don't have the twist here, or you notice I've made a mark there with a zero across in. That's to let me know that is the lock point. That's what I've got to look for when I put this back in. Because my taper is absolutely precise. I can't slide forward or backward with this plank. It must fit into an exact position. Using my T-square, I measure the dimensions. Now I'm actually working on the back side of the plank, so it doesn't matter that I've got all this you know, scribbling and I'm working upside down. The taper should actually be on the other side, but because I'm cutting and I'm drawing, i have basically doing the plank upside down. So this is the bow section I'm actually working on, even though I'm going to flip this around in a sec, and that will be for the stern. So that all gets trimmed off, and then I sand all those um, joins and all those edges smooth until I've got a uh, nicely tapered plank. It really doesn't take that long, and it's not that hard. So, with my tapered plank flipped around now so that I know it fits, that's where the anchor point comes in handy, because that reminds me that's where that's got to go. I can now glue it in. Now, I don't worry about wetting this plank. These ones, which I believe are basswood, they absorb that glue, the uh, the moisture from that glue, that I can pretty well go straight on and um, sort of lock them in with my special little clamps that I made in previous video, and I can get the um, plank bander out straight away. I don't have to worry about it, because there's enough moisture in those planks. And they don't require as much twisting because my tapered planks fit exactly into the space they're going. They just have to conform to the curve. So it's really not that hard. Not as difficult as putting in those safely. These are more flexible, they're cut to shape, and if you see my previous videos you know that I found the line of tapering that um, created the least amount of stress. It was the line that matched the curve of the hull. So there's very little. There's only a few little spots where these planks will actually curve up. So again, Glue goes in, I work my way along using those nice little um, lock-in pieces, those blocks with nails in them. And once that's done, it's a matter now of um, fixing any lift. So there is a little twist there, just one. And all I do is push the glue into it, into that little little sort of opening gap, put the electric plank bling tire over it, and then to smooth and push, I've used a file, that seems to work. Pushing the file on there is the same as sort of rubbing with my fingers, but it does seem to work better when you've um, You've got one of those tricky little sort of um, little lift ups. <laughs> I don't know what to call them, but basically they're the only only areas where you're going to have a little bit of difficulty, and they happen where it's um, you know at the bow and the stern where you're going to have the little lifts and curves. So this one goes all the way around. Now that method I'm using, the uh, the plank does not go all the way to the stem. It ends there on the wall line, and we trim it off. It's just the way I have done this particular ship. There are other ways to do it, and uh, it just depends what method you're using. Repeating the same techniques again, 
that I used at the stern. Anything that lifts up, put a little bit of glue in, smooth it out, get the electric plank bender on it, and holds it in place. Pin it again, and that won't move. That'll be fine. Now it's just a matter of giving the whole side of the hull a rub, because that, uh, that does seem to finish it off, get all the planks sitting in place. And the file seems to do that quite well. So that's it. It is as easy as that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks that I shared with you in this video. They're not the only way to do things. They're just the ways that I've come up with that seem to work for me, and they've given me the solutions that I want. And there's certainly harder ways to do things that get better effects, and there are easy ways to do things that maybe get you 90% of the way there. However you float your boat. Yeah, honestly, with wood ship building, you can do it your way. It's all a creative process. You're working with natural material. Look, don't let me or anybody else tell you what to do. I'm just sharing this with you. It might be a benefit. Hopefully you might like to try out at least my trick with trying to do the um, nail hole plugs because you might have thought, oh, it's too hard. There's too many of them. Oh, there's too much work. Well, honestly, you could at least do that half of the hull there. Um, you know, that whole bottom section, you could probably do that in the afternoon. The top, well, I'll talk about that another time because um, plugging that, well, it's similar but different. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. Now, look, if you like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe. I really would like to hear what you've got to say. And if you've got better tips and tricks, I'll share them by all means. Just be respectful about it, okay? We're all friends here, the modeling community. Let's just be nice. And Look, if you really want to support me and help me produce more videos like this, then have a look at my Patreon page. There's a link here somewhere. And uh, click on that. Go there for as little as a dollar a month. You will get my videos early. You get them day before everyone else, right? So you get a sneak preview. And also you get them advert free, which is rather nice. You don't get those pesky adverts in the way. So there you go. If you want to be treated a little bit better, <laughs> go to Patreon. Plus you get to talk to me and suggest what topics we can have for other videos. There's a lot more going on on Patreon. So you want to be more interactive? That's the place to be. All right, I will get on with this and get the rest of my no holes plugged. And um, yeah, that's something for me to do in lockdown. <laughs> All right, that's it for now. Goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Dini. <laughs>